Good morning. This is Joe, WB0PJZ. I'm the President of Applied Engineering Science. And today I'd like to introduce you to our latest product, the DWM2 Digital Reflectometer, also known as a watt meter. So let's begin by looking at the directional coupler that comes with the DWM2. This is a prototype uh, version of the, uh, of the coupler. It has an RF port that's an SO239, has an output port that's also an SO239, that if at the time that you order them you would like P uh, type N connectors, we can install type N connectors in their place. Otherwise, we uh, would have to rework one and there's a fee associated with reworking a coupler. The coupler also has a cal table on it, so that if you move it from one port to another, it shows the values that must be entered into the new port in order for the coupler to be accurate. And the output of the coupler uh, is connected into the bottom uh, right down here. It's, uh, it's an aluminum enclosure that's uh, coated in class 3 iridite and uh, everything has been silk screened on it so that it should be extremely durable and you can put it out of the way anywhere that's comfortable for, for you um, and not have to worry about it whatsoever. So this is the DWM2, the digital reflectometer mainframe. And uh, let's take a look at, uh, at its features and uh, how, how it's operated. First off, there's a power switch. There's usually a couple second delay before the LED turns green. When the LED turns green, what you see is uh, the power is now up to proper voltages and uh, the uh, DWM2 starts its boot sequence. Um, it'll go through several screens here which is then going through in computing correction coefficients, calibration coefficients, and setting it up for operation. It normally comes up with port A selected at 2000 watts and in operate mode. So let's go through the features on the display. The first one is an analog uh, forward power uh, gauge that allows you to get an analog view of what your average output power is an analog uh, standing wave ratio uh, bar graph that will show you what the standing wave ratio is again on an analog format which is great for tuning applications. Uh, we have a LED that uh, is green anytime that the input power is within the range of the analog meter. If it's not, then it will turn red and inform you that you're on the wrong scale factor. By the way, you can do no damage to the watt meter by having it on the wrong range. If you put 2000 watts into it when it's running on a 20 watt scale, it will not hurt the watt meter whatsoever. Uh, in addition to that, we show what the, the selected range is up here at the top. In this case, it's a 2000 watt range. We have an SWR alarm built in that any time the SWR instantaneously goes above 3 to 1, it will set off the alarm, the LED will turn red, and there will be an audible uh, train wreck sound that will let you know that there's something seriously wrong that needs attention. There is a port select switch that allows you to select any one of the four coupler ports. A range select switch that goes from 20 watts, 200 watts, and 2000 watts. And then a mode operate switch here that's either in operate or in tune. And when it's in tune, it disables the audible alert for the SWR. So that you can tune up an amplifier, you can tune up a tuner, it doesn't matter. And you don't have to listen to the, to, to the audible alarm go off. Once you're tuned up, you put it back into operate mode and everything is just fine. So there's now four digital gauges. The first one is the forward power gauge, and this is a digital readout of the power. Uh, and in a 2000 watt scale, it'll read power to 1 watt. In the uh, 20 watt range, it'll read power to 10 milliwatts. This is the reflected power gauge. It's red because you don't want any reflected power if you can help it. It also has the same range constraints as does the uh, forward power gauge. This is the peak power gauge, and what it does is it shows you what the instantaneous peak power is, and it resets about every five seconds, so it'll show you what the, uh, what the peak power's been over the past five seconds. And the bottom gauge is a digital uh, voltage standing wave ratio uh, 
uh, uh, gauge that will show you what the actual SWR is to two decimal places. So let's go through how you would configure a, a coupler port if you were not going to use it for, let's say, port A. Once the instrument comes up from its boot sequence, uh, you'll get a configure screen here. And all you have to do is simply touch the configure coupler button, wait a few seconds, and you will get a uh, uh, configure screen for the couplers. There are four bars. There's a coupler high, coupler low for forward, coupler high, coupler low for reflected. The data for this comes directly off of the uh, table that's on the directional coupler. So all you would simply have to do is enter the data on the, on the touch screen for whatever the combinations are that are called out on the directional coupler. Select the port that you're interested in and then hit save. Once an audible alarm goes off, you know that information has been saved and you would simply hit exit. And then after the uh, instrument exits, which will take it a few seconds to store that data and to verify that data and to store replicates of that data, I guess first thing, there we go, it will reboot itself. And your instrument is ready to go. All you simply have to do is select the port that you wanted to use and your instrument is up and running on that port. One other feature that we have on the DWM2 is a system reset switch. Anytime that uh, you, you're, you're in the process of inputting information into the coupler uh, setup screen, before you use the instrument, one thing you want to do is always hit system reset to go through and force a hard reboot of the, the processors so that uh, you're always dealing with the latest calibration data. So this is the back of the DWM2 and we have an IEC standard power connector and the four input ports for the different couplers. Again, port A is the default port. This is the one that you always want to plug a directional coupler into first. This is the one that comes configured from the factory uh, for the coupler that comes with the DWM2. So port B, C, and D are available for any other three couplers that you might want to use for different bands, different amplifiers, uh, different measurement points in the system. Uh, you can configure it any way you want for whatever application you have in mind. One thing that's very important is only use the DWM2 with an AES coupler. Uh, the coupler is proprietary, the interface is proprietary, and if you use any other coupler you risk damaging the DWM2. This instrument is made in the United States of America. It is designed here, it is manufactured here and it is supported here. Uh, so it's a complete 100% US made product. We're very proud of that and this product will always be made in the USA. This product is in compliance with FCC Part 15 rules and regulations. Uh, it has been certified by an EMC lab is ready for production. The coupler is designed with uh, maintaining the best possible integrity of received signals when used in a communications environment. There is no digital signal processing occurring inside the directional coupler. All there is are, is analog interfaces between the directional coupler and the DWM2. This ensures that there is no contamination whatsoever with received signals uh, in, in an environment used for communications. So let's take a look at uh, the DWM2 uh, in normal operation. So to begin with, what we're going to do is uh, we're, we've set up uh, the radio to simply put out a carrier and as a result we're going to put out about 5 watts and that power is going into an AES dummy load which we'll show you momentarily. But right now let's, uh, let's take a look at what happens when we put out a 5 watt carrier. So 
So here's five watts. Uh, the gauge gauges show five watts forward, five watts peak, and SWR 1.41. Now, at on this scale, what we'd really like to do is go down to the 20 watt scale so we can see more detail. So we'll press the 20 watts. We'll see this change to 20. And now all we see is we have 5.17 watts. That 0.17 might be important to some folks who run QRP. A peak power of 5, we're getting 150 milliwatts of reflected power. SWR 1.41 and our analog gauge now shows just a bit over 5 watts. So now I'm going to show you what happens if you're putting in more power than the range is, is normally configured for. Here's 50 watts. Now our digital gauges will always show uh, the most accurate power that they can. In this case we're showing 51 watts even though we're on a 20 watt scale. We get 1.53 watts of reflected power. Uh, we have a 52 watts of peak power and an SWR 1.41. But the analog power and range LED is now lit red because you're, you're now exceeding 20 watts forward. So now let's look at uh, what happens when we're uh, sending CW and we want to see what our peak output power is. Well, right now I've got the, uh, the uh, keyer set up to run about, uh, let's say, 40 words a minute. By the way, I can't send or receive 40 words a minute, but that's beside the point. And I'm going to send a single dip. I hope. Now what you can see now is the average power was zero, but the peak power was 55 watts. So if I key this thing down and just let it run, we're seeing 55 watts, 56 watts. So we're capable of measuring instantaneous peak power, which is great for uh, doing CW work, it's great for doing uh, RIDI. Uh, the other thing it's a very advantageous for is for measuring AM. So a 100% modulated AM carrier, the peak power is four times uh, the average power. And with the DWM2, you can measure not only the average carrier power, but you can, ma you can also measure the peak power that your transmitter is putting out. So let's take a look at uh, how you would use uh, uh, DWM2 while you're uh, activating and optimizing uh, an antenna tuner. So in this case, we're gonna put five watts into an antenna uh, that uh, uh, has an antenna tuner in line. And the first thing we're gonna do is when I key it, you see that we have an SWR 4.21 and an SWR alarm that went off and the SWR LED went red. So we'll put this thing in tune. And now there's no alarm. And now we can go adjust the tuner. And as if you watch the bar graph here, we'll see it, uh, we'll see it tune appropriately. So you can minimize it on one control. You can go over and adjust other controls uh, to get the SWR down to wherever you want it to be. And there's an SWR of one to one. Can't get any better than that. So we'd like to thank you for taking time today for uh, reviewing our DWM2. And uh, we hope that you, uh, you found it informative and uh, enlightening. And we look forward to seeing your, your order for a new uh, uh, digital reflectometer come in uh, anytime soon. The other thing that we have is uh, our passive load array known as a dummy load, the EPLA2, and we'll show you its features and characteristics in another video. Thank you very much for, uh, for watching our, our introduction.